Okay, uh, we are recovering from watching me uh, from the night after the premiere with Tom and Ariana. I gotta keep. I keep saying I just released part one, the the recap, which is like three plus hours. It, it's just insane. But I, I just keep hitting this. I, I feel so sad right now. I feel so heavy with this whole thing. Do you guys feel like this? I mean, we've had so many laughs over this season, but at the end of the day, I'm just reminded of really how dark this is and where do you go from here? And, and even in terms of our own lives and forgiveness, like where does Sandoval go from here? I think if anything, Sandoval was still not really realizing the ripple effect that this would have. And, you know, being out on the road, it might be temporarily good to kind of be around fans potentially. But in the end, I would imagine that's still a very empty place to be. And then Raquel, Rachel, we don't know. I mean, hopefully she is in that mental health facility they keep referring to. Uh, Ariana was on Watch What Happens Live uh, and says that, you know, Raquel sent a letter to Tom, you know, and, and of course everybody was making the joke that it, it's probably just in cr crayons. Like, do you, do you like me, Tom? Check A. Yeah. Check B. No. But how do you come back from that? How do you, I mean, like, listen, we make really big mistakes in this, but this just seems so plotted out and the length of time and just to, to be in somebody's face as a friend, it seems more than just a simple mistake. This took planning. This took effort. You know, it's it, so many times they could have stopped this, backed out, all of that stuff. And it just, just so bad. And just, you know, it does almost make you believe in this weirder, higher power of, and I don't want to hear people say, oh, it's fake, it's fake. But just in that moment, even Tom said in the first part, like, dude, usually I delete videos like that. For that video to have been on his phone, for it to fall out of his pocket, to get handed to Ariana, Ariana had his code, you know, all of that stuff, for that to happen, thank God it did. Because we really, they said they would have let a, let you know let Ariana know before the reunion, but he lied about all these other things. Who knows if that really was the plan? So here we're going to cover a lot of the news, and you guys, there is so much news. I thought there's been news every week, but this is just pile on top of pile on top of pile and just information that is coming out right now. Ariana is on her tour, a hero's journey, I call it. She did Watch What Happens Live as the solo guest, and it got the ratings, you guys, are insane. I, I believe I mentioned this in the first part, but if I didn't, I mean, this is just wild. And I knew the ratings were going to be insane for the finale, but watch what happens live. I knew it was going to be insane for that too, but I don't think I was prepared for just how insane these ratings are. Um, check this out. I'm such a geek for ratings. And remember, these are just same day. It doesn't take into account people watching them after the fact, the three-day ratings and the seven-day ratings. So the actual episode, the finale episode, season 10, episode 15, got a 0.83 in the demo. And that's ages 18 to 49. That's the really the key advertising demo right there. And it has a season high of 1,885,000 viewers. Now, by the time all of those other numbers, I think you're going to get 3.5 potentially. Now, I believe they Vanderpump Rules, the last time they got that high of numbers were season four or season five, but just insane numbers. And then get this, on Watch What Happens Live, the solo one with Ariana, it got 1,493,000 viewers. That is a, not just a season high, a series high. It is the highest rated show in Watch What Happens Live history. Think about all of the stars that they've had on that show. And of course, I'm just talking about Teresa Giotici and Kim Zolciak Bierman. No, they've had every star. I mean, like, I mean, he had Oprah on for the love of God. Ariana beat Oprah. What? And that's that's amazing. She also did um, the Today Show with with uh, I believe it was Hoda, right? And then she did The View. Whoopi Goldberg looks so pained of like. Uh, Vanderpump rules. Uh, you, you know, the Vanderpump rules, like, you know, did that and did it amazing. Um, and he's on a press tour. Uh, she was in the New York times today, the New York times, the paper of note. And I believe you'll be hearing pretty soon of the first podcast she'll be doing. I think you'll hear about that soon. So it is just, the sky is the limit. 
but it just goes to show you, you know, when you do things right and when you, you seem to be a good person and everything that we see from Ariana, there seems to be this innate goodness from her. And like I said, we can't put her too much on a pedestal, even though we've, we're already doing that because you're bound to fall off from that. And I think she even mentioned that in the view of just saying, listen, I'm a human, you know, I'm, you know, she's going to be bound to make mistakes and I hope we give her now that's where I'm good with giving somebody grace. We throw around that word grace in reality shows on Bravo so much, but that is where we need some grace. I believe when anything like that happens. So the first thing I want to walk you guys through is variety did this amazing article by one of my favorite entertainment reporters, Kate Arthur. Um, she's just incredible. I'm such a huge fan of her work and I have been for years. Um, but her article in Variety, Inside How Vanderpump Rules Captured the Hashtag Scandal. And it takes everybody through this. Um, and it, you know, brings up the day on March 3rd, 12.06 p.m. When TMZ initially broke this, Tom Sandoval and Ariana Maddox calls it, Ari Ariana Maddox calls it quits. Um, so that was that day when all of that broke. Now, Alex Baskin, the executive producer of Vanderpump Rules, did an interview with Variety is that uh, walks us through how everything happened that day. So Maddox had called production the day before, which would have been Thursday, to tell them what had happened. And cameras were already at the Valley Village farmhouse that she and Sandoval bought together in 2019. Can you imagine? They were like, let's go. Hey, well, I mean, that's the kind of call. I want everything taped. I want Aria, I want that whole conversation with Alec Baskin taped. Um, but Baskin says it was a bomb that got dropped off with that TMZ twist. Um, as Baskin puts it, it's a modern twist on the where was I when Kennedy was shot moment. And it's very true. I know that's kind of you're like, oh, come on, a president shot. But everybody that I've had on this podcast since that day that this broke has had they have made a point to tell me where they were when they found out. And that just really grabs you. Um, Jennifer Lopez was asked about it on The View. Comedian Roy Wood Jr., who hosted the White House Correspondents Dinner, um, he made a joke about it that Ariana Maddox and Lisa Vanderpump was there that night, uh, uh, along with Lala Kent. Um, to the outside world, the scandal has been a widely covered news stories with news story with legs. Um, for Bravo watchers and Vanderpump Rules viewers, particularly, this thrilling controversy has been the payoff for watching this show's cast since it premiered in January 2013. Ten plus years. Um, so it, it kind of breaks down a lot of this. And Vanderpump, Lisa Vanderpump, was interviewed and says, how can you get any more real than this, darling? I have never met such a group of people that are just so willing to film it all. That's a magic that you can't create. Thank you, Lisa. Um, it really has been gripping television. And it talks about the TikTok and the Instagram obsession with everybody breaking down each moment, Demois and TMZ. Um, season 10 has been its most watched ever with an average combined audience of 2.5 million on Bravo on demand and the Peacock platform within three days, a 77% increase over last season, 77%. Um, it also talks about Maddox being a fan favorite that had dealt with a lot of tragedy this season with the death of her dog and her grandmother, but also talked about how she got cast in a lifetime movie. She's reportedly going to be on the next season of Dancing with the Stars. She has a merch line with Katie Maloney for something about her, her new uh, sandwich shop. And she's grossed six figures. Oh, sorry. The t-shirt, the merch line for something about her has grossed six figures and counting. And they were using that money for the business. They actually started working on that last week. If you drove past there, you've noticed work has been start, work has started. It commenced on that. Uh, she even was at the NBC Universal Upfronts this week to uh, promote BravoCon. She was a surprise guest and everybody was thrilled to have her. Um, in a splintered pop culture universe, Kate writes, where one person's passion is another person's, huh? The scandal has been galvanizing almost community building. And that's so very true. It's potentially why you're listening to this today or seeing this on YouTube. As the season has unfolded, witnessing how their affair was hiding in play, plain sight, the cast finds out that Levis slept over at Sandoval's house when Maddox was out of town after her grandmother died. 
Um, Variety spoke with Baskin uh, to break all of this down um, and what could possibly be next for the show. Uh, Maddox spoke with production on March 2nd after learning of the affair the previous night, and we had cameras back up on March 3rd, Baskin says. He credits Bravo with getting us back up and running so quickly. They're like, hell yeah, what do you need? And he's like, I'll hold the camera. Andy and the camera, yeah. Um, they also, by the way, Evolution, who Alex is, you know, executive producer, they also do Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, which is also currently filming. And Baskin said, you know, for us to be able to go to the network and say, you guys, this is a moment. Of course, we didn't know what it would become, but we knew we needed to capture it. They got us all of the necessary approvals and clearances so that we could tell the story in real time. That's why your scene is pure verite, like cinema verite. It's like, you know, Vanderpump says it was essentially essential to capture these developments because fundamentally it changed everything in the group. It changed everything. And at this point, Ken comes into the article. He's like, did you know Tom Zanzibar was in the jacuzzi with Raquel? No, she goes, we'd be remiss if we just said, Oh, this happened. But I think this is the essence of a great reality show to have people that are willing to share their lives authentically. Despite what person, what a person not on reality TV might think this cast, even Sandoval, Levis and Maddox was primed to be on camera filming emotional bedlam. Baskin says he's known them since before Vanderpump Rules launched because he developed the series around Vanderpump, whom he knew from The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Remember that. They, they took Lisa from Beverly Hills and made Vanderpump around her. He goes, it goes back to having the relationship with them over years where those are just really direct conversations. And so there isn't the big windup of, well, there's something we need to talk about. It's like, look, we're in on this. We have to cover this. Had the reunion not already been scheduled for March 23rd, Third, this one episode potentially could have been more, he adds. Ooh, that was a nice little thing. This could have been more, but they already knew they had to go do the reunion. At that moment, like I said, move the reunion. What are you, crazy? When the crew went to Maddox and Sandoval's house on March 3rd, they captured the devastating fight that will be shown in full during the finale, which we just saw. Um, According to Baskin, the former couple were cohabitating in the same place, but were not really talking to each other. And that scene was one of the first times they had spoken to each other since she found out about the relationship with Raquel. Can you imagine that living in the same house and being like, save it for the cameras? Um, they were already filming when the TMZ story broke. So this, and by the way, that's when I remember I was at the gym. I texted Ariana when I was at my trainers and I was like, Hey, cause I had finally found out it was true. I was like, hope you're hanging. I hope you're, I said, I don't know if this is true or not, but I hope you're okay. Um, and I did not text Tom, but, uh, they were already filming and I wonder what part of the day they were filming. So when re production restarted, producers knew what they needed. They needed Tom and Ariana and it would be disappointing if you didn't see them. Baskin says you wanted Tom and Raquel. You wanted to see Tom and Tom and you wanted to see some version of the friend group. Now in an ideal world, you would get everyone together and you might've gotten Raquel talking to Ariana as well. What idea? I mean, that's not even, I don't even know if I could have handled that. I'm, I'm already, I've got the shits just thinking about the reunion next week. Are you kidding me? Oh, just my stomach hurts so bad. These last two agenda items would have to wait for the reunion. So the Raquel thing and everyone together. As for whether any of the cast expressed regrets after what they filmed in this raw state, Baskin says that as the hashtag scandal went mega viral, a loving scene between Sandoval and Levis that might appear to be very insensitive became a concern for them. The scene remains, nevertheless. So that was obviously the galaxy light scene at Raquel's apartment. The story moved at the speed of light in the hours and days after the first TMZ post, with details emerging about how Sandoval and Levis had actually been together for seven months and were in love. This wasn't just a regretted one-night stand as seen in previous Vanderpump Rules cheating scandals. Yet, as the rest of the cast posted real-time reactions to their social media accounts, Levis went another route, through the courts. On the morning of March 7th, TMZ broke the news that Levis's lawyer sent a legal letter to members of the cast about the FaceTime video that had exposed the affair in the first place, which is also what gave us send it to Daryl. I don't want to see that in the morning. I'm trying to feed my daughter. Send it to Daryl. 
Lala's infamous now T-shirt and uh, hoodie line started from this legal letter. I mean, that's what I mean. What a backfiring of that of Raquel of like, yeah, let's get law involved. And then literally making Lala six figures off of that one thing that she did. Um, so also that previously hadn't been known about the FaceTime video in regards to Sandoval and Raquel, you know, that Sandoval was whacking off over at Schwartz's. Um, and also there was implied that Sandoval had recorded it without Levis's consent, which I have never, I don't really like to FaceTime. I don't really like talking on the phone regardless. And especially I don't want to look at myself, but I didn't know you could actually record your FaceTime. Like, wouldn't it alert the other person? Anywho, I'm just going to trust that that uh, that is all true. Um, that night, again, according to TMC, she filed the restraining order against Sheena, claiming that she had hit her uh, hours after appearing on Watch What Happens Live. Do you think there's a world in which we'll ever see Raquel and Watch What Happens Live again? I don't see it. As chaos reigned, production adjusted. Fortunately, we did not get a cease and desist, Alec, Alex Baskin says. I always joke that we have a coffee table book full of them, but we didn't get one there. Which, by the way, Alex, if you're listening, I would love to make that a coffee table book of all of the cease and desist that production has gotten. That would be the best coffee table book for a Bravo fan. Are you kidding me? Baskin says with a laugh, surely thinking of past real housewives experiences. There were a lot of things that we knew that hadn't leaked yet, but we had some inclination that the restraining order was coming. So imagine that production knowing this was coming and not telling the cast the restraining order, of course, would cause headaches for the March 23rd reunion date, but Bravo and production were confident that they could navigate it. For now, they were riding the wave, which was becoming a tsunami. We felt like we were in the middle of something that we had to try to control, but probably couldn't, Baskin said, because it was just a juggernaut. On March 3rd, the reality television equivalent of D-Day, Vanderpump Rules Nation, reacted in shock to the scandal. But as we've seen the season has gone on, the truth is more nuanced. People suspected the affair. Kent, in particular, Lala, was onto them, which is why there are so many scenes of Maddox defending Levis, like in episode 13 on May 3rd, when Maddox says on camera that Raquel is kind and sweet and loyal and just a delight since the day I met her. Totally brutal. But also, why were people flabbergasted by this news if it was something everyone was wondering about? Baskin says, it's obviously was something that was discussed, but we didn't take it that seriously because it just seems so far-fetched and so devious, the word devious. And so I'm an idiot. I was completely dismissive of it. So here is Alex Baskin, Baskin the executive producer saying, hey, I didn't believe it. It just seemed too crazy and mean for even this cast of Vanderpump Rules. And I think that's really a lot of what we felt as well, you guys. Baskin says, no one in the cast or crew caught them beyond what we've seen. Everything that we knew was on the show when we knew it. That includes a confessional producer asking Sandoval point blank. I, I believe that's Jeremiah, uh, producer Jeremiah, um, in episode 12, whether anything physical had happened between him and Levis, which Baskin says was recorded on February 15th, two weeks to the day before Maddox uncovered the truth. Remember that? He's smiling. He's like, dude, not nah, dude. Nothing has happened between me and Raquel, dude. Wink. It's so dark to look at that now. Do you, his big, weird smile, that you're just like, ooh, how did people not know? You seem like a basket case. Baskin says that the edits had been locked through episode 11, so they had already finished the first 11 episodes. Those were all locked. When the scan of all broke and that we tried to take great pains, frankly, not to alter the episodes as they happened in real time. A few times he said they got notes from Bravo saying, it seems like we know too much here. When in fact, they hadn't re-edited anything. He says, it's like try, try watching The Sixth Sense again, Basket said. It seems really obvious after the fact, not because we edited it, but because you know. Now, The Sixth Sense, I think, has been out for 25 years. So um, Bruce Willis is dead in that movie from the get-go. I'm just going to ruin it for everybody. If you haven't seen The Sixth Sense, I think 25 years is a good amount of time to give you. You should have watched it. But Bruce Willis is dead the whole time. So like that little Haley Joel Osment, who I think is in his 80s now, he's like, I see dead people. And Bruce Willis was dead the whole time. And then you go back and watch the movie and you're like, of course, but you would have never seen it, right? We all just wouldn't, we, we see what we want to see. And like a lot of us just kind of trust and we don't think that people are devious and dark like this, even though we've all done 
not this bad of things, but we've done bad things in our lives, all of us. Um, there's an intricate scene in episode 13, a conversation filmed uh, in September between Lala Kent and uh, James Kennedy, DJ James Kennedy, guys night, about Levis having been caught sleeping over at Sandoval's house when Maddox was away because her grandmother had died. That featured fast forwarding and rewinding. Remember that we talked about in the recap? It was like, it was like a lot. It concludes with Kent saying, I think Sandoval has a thing for Raquel, to which Kennedy responds, damn, damn. Which, by the way, didn't she actually say, I think Raquel has a thing for Sandoval? I, anyways, Baskin credits the concept of that segment to great editors and a really great story team. They were encouraged to try some things, and it worked brilliantly. But at that point, how much were producers relying on Kent and Kennedy to be the show's Greek chorus? Now, that is a, a theater reference also. is like you had the Greek chorus. Uh, they would be the voice, you know, the, the voice of the audience, kind of. You know, they were the ones actually letting us know what to pay attention to. And Baskin says a lot. At that point, even though Ariana talks about it with Tom and she says she keeps hearing it, she didn't want to believe it. So you absolutely are reliant on Lala and James to do that. And by the way, he adds, they would have looked terrible had they not been proven to be correct. Isn't that amazing too? You're like, remember if Raquel, none of this had happened, Lala would have kind of come off a bully, especially towards Raquel, but it would have just made them look like two dummies like they did initially in those early seasons when they were drunks. So thank God they proved to be right. How do you solve a problem like Raquel Levis? She's an ex-beauty pageant contestant who never found much success in that world. Damn, burned by Kate Arthur. Um, she's the Bambi-eyed ex fiance of the histrionic, sometimes vicious DJ James Kennedy whom she met because she was a fan. Another great burn by Kate Arthur, even though it's real, it's true. It's not really a burn. She's a young woman who had a panic attack on camera in episode six of this season saying, people have been literally asking me, Raquel, who are you? And you know what my answer is? I don't know. Like she was telling us, she was warning us. Somebody that doesn't know themselves is potentially more dangerous than people that do know them. Well, that was so deep, Ryan. That do know themselves. Mm. Um, she's a cast member without clear ties to the wider Vanderpump Rules group who careened from off-camera kissing Sir Manager Peter Madrigal to on-camera kissing Oliver Sanders, um, who, of course, is... Uh... <sighs> this is so dark, you guys. Man, Garcelle's son, of course. Making out with Schwartz, whose estranged wife Maloney had been explicitly clear how hurtful such a thing would be. Even before the scandal, Levis was lurching through an erratic, worrying season. I just think she was going through more clearly than we knew that she was, Baskin said, adding that she seemed to be cast adrift during filming. But we have to be removed. So he's saying we have to have this we have to remove ourselves as, you know, kind of documentarians in a way that we can't do it. We've just got to film what we can film of this, but it is weird for somebody being adrift that Sandoval at that same time, when he was going through his loss of mojo, it's like these two wrecks of a ship, these two train wrecks, these two burning dumpster fires found each other, which is not nearly as romantic as they thought it was. But they each needed something. I'm guessing Raquel needed some sort of stability. And Sandoval was blowing so much smoke up her ass. Like, dude, Raquel, you're the best thing that fucking since sliced bread. Are you kidding me? They both needed each other in this weird lost state. But once again, I'm not glamorizing because it's just at the end of the day, dumb. It doesn't hold any weight. On April 14th, Levis representative announced that she had entered a voluntary facility for mental health counseling and confirmed a variety on Tuesday that she remains there now. With that decision, Levis appears to have acknowledged that her capricious behavior, that, as it turns out, was also de deceitful, was unhealthy. Yet since Vanderpump Rules producers didn't know Levis's big biggest secret as they filmed the season, her on-screen behavior seemed to them typical of someone finding themselves after a broken engagement. But with Levis prodding Maddox in episode 14, asking those probing questions about her sex life with Scandival, Sandoval, it was just really painful to watch, Baskin says. Raquel is very childlike. It's a very interesting word. Because it's kind, it's still a little, there's still a little barb in there of like being called childlike. 
But I think he chooses his wording there very carefully because I would imagine they're still trying to get her for season 11. I don't know if she's on the fence or not. That is really the million dollar question. Also, who the fuck are you, Raquel? Uh, he says, there's this sense that she's this criminal mastermind. I don't think it's that deep. But Alex, I would like to present to you this, Mr. Baskin, is that maybe it is that deep. Maybe once again, we can't just be fooled. We have to look deeper now. If anything, Scandal has just made us go, damn, maybe people sometimes are inherently bad. But plainly put, does Levis creating these harmful storylines for herself, all while keeping the biggest one private, present production with an ethical quandary? We don't want to exploit anyone. That's not good in any sense, Baskin says. It's not good morally. It doesn't good, make good television, but adults make adult decisions. When asked about Levis's journey this season, Vanderpump, who does like her naughty innuendo, responds, a journey, that's a nice word for it, a journey, where she ended up flat on her back with her legs in the air. That's lit I'm not making it up. That's literally Lisa Vanderpump's quote. Then, sympathetically, Vanderpump answers in earnest, rejecting that anything about the hashtag Scandal was done in bad faith to create a good story for the show. I'd like to think that feeling superseded any quest you had for storyline because, boy, it comes at a hell of a price. I think there were genuine feelings there, but she just handled everything wrong. As did Sandoval, she adds. He just handled everything back to front and upside down. Levis, who is single, has borne the brunt of what happened. Yet it's Sandoval who was in a committed relationship. A cast member on Vanderpump Rules since its first season, blah, blah, blah. Um, he pays close attention to performance, and it may be that his shape-shifting qualities have made it harder for the full blame of the Scandoval to stick to him. In the finale, the audience will see him try to affix fault to Maddox, for not listening to him, not apologizing enough to him when he tried to break up with her, which may not be a winning strategy with viewers. As he directs the signature um, yell, he's employed for 10 seasons toward Maddox. Levis' struggles were obvious, but Baskin said clearly Tom wasn't doing well either in a lot of senses. Googling Tom Sandoval costume yields an impressive array of transformations he's made over the years. He's done drag. He's dressed as a vampire. He's worn colored contacts and wigs. I mean, they, listen, he's he's dressed up like a, a human being sometimes. And I don't know if he is one. I'm joking. For last Halloween, according to photos from Levis's Instagram, it appears he dressed as Levis. Shay, Sheena Shay, has always denied Levis's account of what happened. Though paradoxically, she does admit in tonight's finale that she shoved her so fucking hard after Watch What Happens Live. But let's begin by stipulating that even if Shay did pose a physical threat to Levis, in this unique case, being surrounded by dozens of people at the reunion, including security, would have removed any true danger. With that stated, Bravo and the show's producers needed a plan to film the reunion around this temporary restraining order. Moving the taping date would have been the best way to avoid any hindrances, but the logistics of it were too difficult, Baskin said. They couldn't get this temporary restraining order lifted since restraining orders are hard to revoke and requ require a court proceeding. Which, By the way, people wanted to fight me on this so bad. It's like, no, that's not it. Guys, that's just how the state of California does it. If they were like, no, she, it's like, come on. Um, so Levis, nor could Levis appear just on Zoom. We came to find out that we couldn't even have them remotely communicate with each other. So it wouldn't even matter if they put a, like a, you know, a computer out there and she was on Zoom. They couldn't even do that around Sheena. Uh, because that arguably would have violated the restraining order. So they concluded that they had to rotate Shay and Levis in separate segments of the reunion, but even that wasn't easy. That required 200 yards of distance between them. Um, meant the footprint of the Van Nuys stage, oh, they shot in Van Nuys, wasn't big enough for them both to be in the studio at the same time. We had to bring in a trailer, Baskin says, which, by the way, is the trailer I think we saw in the reunion preview Remember the one that, you know, Sandoval and Raquel is in? They brought in a trailer. Okay. That planning was really complicated and had a number of attorneys involved. Whoo! As much as it would have been great to get them together, just the choreography of that is pretty interesting, he continues. And we always say that was the reality. Beyond the logistics, this needs to be a fucking documentary. Are you kidding me? Beyond the logistics dictated by the restraining order, there was another key question. 
Given the chaos reunions, which are hosted by Cohen, sometimes devolve into how would the audience actually get satisfying answers about what happened? The producers decided that on top of the group discussion, Cohen would do separate one-on-one -on -one interviews with Sandoval, Maddox, and Levis that will be edited into the three episodes amid the traditional group interaction. This is going to be edited into the group scenes. The purpose of them was to be able to give the principals, which are Ariana, Levis, and, and Maddox, the chance to answer the questions without having the group around. So like DJ James couldn't be like, you're a poo-poo head doubly. I know I said it earlier, but I feel your poo-poo heads again. Guys, no Um, Because the group was a mob, Alex Baskin says. As even more significant, an even more significant question, was Levis actually going to come? The reunion filmed on a Thursday and Baskin said he wasn't sure she was truly attending until the Tuesday before. Yes, reunions are a contractual obligation, but this was a 28-year-old who'd been receiving death threats. She was having a really tough time and we were very clear with her and, and her team that she had to feel comfortable being there, Baskin said. And if she didn't, we understood. In the end, Levis did decide to attend, which she announced herself on Instagram that week. I think that part of it was she wanted to be able to see Ariana and she wanted to be accountable. And it's sort of up to the viewers to decide what they think about all of that. But it was important for her to be there. And we were assured that she was going, that she was okay being there. There were other plot threads on the show this season, like Shay's wedding. Yeah. Sheena got married. Do you guys know Sheena got married this season? Uh, Lala Kent reentering the dating pool. Oh God. The Dawn. What up? I'm little Lala. Woo. I wonder if there's going to be questions at the reunion of like, Andy's like, Andy's like, uh, Hey, remember in Lake Havasu when you said, uh, the Dawn made you completely soak through that mattress at your Airbnb. I know this is a family show, but I had to say it. Uh, the vilified Hollywood producer, Randall Emmett and how Maloney and Schwartz have navigated their divorce. But how do those issues even get addressed during the torrent of the scandal? The producers Baskin says, had a very fierce internal debate about whether to begin the reunion with Tom Sandoval on stage or not. The concern that I had was that it's very difficult to cover the rest of the season, which you need to do because it's hard to do the typical sort of reunion control where you say, well, we're going to put all of that on pause, but back to it all feels really small. In the end, they decided that Sandoval would be present from the start. We covered everything else the best we could, but emotions ran as high as you would think. And I didn't know if we were going to be able to get through the entire day. Raquel couldn't be present from the beginning because we had Sheena there. So I was just thinking, are we even going to get to her? I'm like, yeah, you're going to get to her. They did indeed get to her, as you see in the trailer, with Maddox calling Levis diabolical, demented, subhuman, among many other presumably moments of censure. At this very minute, the cast members of Vanderpump Rules are out there living their lives without cameras on them. It seems wrong. But Baskin said the need for a delay being clear to him after they filmed the reunion, because to move forward, the cast needs to see all three parts. So that's what they're saying is that this is talking about them having to not jump in immediately into filming, which they thought they were. So they they uh, they need to see all three parts. The cast does of this reunion, the last of which airs on June 7th. The reunion is not just a recap of what you know, and it's not just an intense version of these emotions. There is new information, he says. I'm not just saying this as a mere tease, he adds. This is true. Infuriatingly, Baskin won't spoil what he means, even when pressed. I will put it this way. There are revelations, and they are revelations that not all of them know now. So we need a little space. Damn, that is dark. I had thought that we needed cameras on them right away. And I now think we need a minute. Sandoval and Maddox are pros at being on reality TV, so presumably they will return. But contracts are only now on the horizon of being renegotiated. And with everything that's happened, it's a fraught decision this time, not the automatic one. I think everyone's wrapping their heads around what that might mean. No one's saying no, I'll say that, but I think it's hard for anybody to say yes right now because they feel like they haven't got any reprieve. That's why Baskin says he's committed to having a minute down. I mean, that really is the smartest way to go, even though we want cameras back up, but you've got to think about the overall health of the show. You really do. You can't like get into the first week of filming and this all falls apart so badly that you have somebody like Sandoval or Raquel or Ariana just walk off for the rest of the season. You need space. It's just, there's been no space for any of us. 
I love that I included all of us into the cast. Like we're the ones that really are, are bearing the brunt of this. Um, so uh, what happens with Levis though is a more delicate question. Since Levis is currently off the grid, I like that it makes it seem like she's a doomsday prepper. You know, she's out there growing her beard, living off the land. We have, we have had these conversations with her reps, Baskin says. Were she to come back, she and people around her have to feel okay about it. And so that's why I also think that waiting a little bit helps. But financially, does this cast have Bravo and Evolution over a barrel? Could they ask for astronomical sums to return? Apparently not. There's a pay scale that we tended to use for tenure, Baskin says. I think the group knows that it isn't like the ratings necessarily translate into there aren't riches on the other side. And there's sort there's a sort of reality of the business. But I will say this is different. This is different. And I think Mr. Baskin knows that as well. There's also the question about whether several ex Vanderpump Rules cast members who were ousted in 2020 for racist actions against Faith Stowers. Faith was on the first year of this podcast and did a very, uh, really fascinating interview. Uh, a black castmate who appeared on the show for a few seasons might come back. Um, Kristen Doty, as well as married couple Jax Taylor and Brittany Cartwright, have all been recent guests on Watch What Happens Live. As pundits about the scandal all appearing on Bravo for the first time since their ignominious, and man, Kate Arthur using words like ignominious, I don't even think I'm pronouncing that right. She's truly brilliant. Um, Doty was fired in June 2020 along with Stasi Schroeder shortly after Stowers revealed that in 2018 they reported her for a crime she had nothing to do with. That December, Taylor's and Cartwright's contracts also weren't renewed. Along with other toxic behavior, Taylor had also accused Stowers of a crime in a tweet. Now the audience appears to be embracing them, which is an interesting conversation that we will definitely be having. Um, Taylor and Cartwright have scored on Peacock on a Watch With show, which they comment on Vanderpump Rules and on Twitter. Doty crowed about the season high ratings of her appearance on Cohen's talk show. She also makes a much hyped appearance on this finale since she's actually friends with Maddox and was supporting her at the post breakup wake at the Valley village house. Despite the well-documented reasons these cast members were fired, Baskin's view on their potential returns appears to be more practical than anything else. He says, this is not a show that you can plug an outsider into. So we definitely have these conversations and in real life, they are, all they are still all friends, he says. But he makes that point. Remember that season with Max and Brett and, you know, those, I mean, Charlie still is remaining, but we had Danica. Uh, we, you know, we, we had all of these, I'm trying to think, Danica Dow, you, you had Dana, Dana Kava, Dana Cathan. Um, you had all of these people and really people rebelled against that. The viewers did not like that. They really, it's hard to pass this show down to another generation. Um, so Vanderpump has always said she didn't want them to be fired in the first place and reassure. Yeah. Don't get your hands dirty, Lisa. And reiterates that again, during our conversation, I like to people see people learn from their mistakes. Even if they're held accountable as an example, chastised, castigated by me, by the audience, learn from their mistakes. Bravo. They let them go. I don't know if there's any coming back from that. But she emphasizes she's all for Dodie appearing on the finale since it happened organically. She's got a right to be there and we should capture it. Yeah, we should capture everything. Lisa is such a politician. After these Scandal Heights fans may need to adjust their expectations for season 11, especially given the lack of clarity on who would consent to be in scenes with Sandoval and Levis, presuming they do return. We will see. We will find out, Vanderpump says. I guess it'd be my job to try and facilitate some sort of healing. Yeah, okay, Lisa. Come over and pet my donkeys. Uh, come over and take Kin for a walk. We'll have everybody there. Baskin says the show will start production this summer, which is, of course, just a month away. It's definitely a balancing act because we don't want too much time to elapse. We can also, as we've proven, get cameras up if we need to. They can do quick production. If Tom and Ariana happen to move, we're up. Oh, yeah. If they move out of their house, we're up. But Baskin continues, I think that we need enough time to pass that we're not just caught in this vortex. 
He's been the executive producer of this show since the beginning and has overseen all of its peaks and valleys. So Baskin isn't taking this moment for granted. I think how fortunate we are that 10 years into this, we are still this relevant. So what has this experience been like for him overall? He says, fun, exciting, maddening, exhausting, annoying. In a really sick way, you sort of live for it within, within also being concerned about the people involved. But it's been all those things. He says, after the TMZ story broke, he didn't leave his house for days. I couldn't. There was no time to do that. Same, Alex. Same. Amazing piece by Kate Arthur. Kate, I don't think you'll hear this, but what an amazing, amazing writer you are. And I thought there was so much information in that. Now, let's just recap real quick one piece about what comes out at these reunions. Now, of course, it's going to come out in those one-on-one -on -one sit-down interviews. So I've heard a lot of theories about this. I heard is uh, is Raquel pregnant? Or was she pregnant and she lost the baby? That would be new information. Are we going to find out the time frame is a lie, which I think it is potentially a lie. But people are going like, oh my God, they've been dating since they you know, Raquel was born. Like, you know, we might find that out. But if that is the thing, they had already filmed the reunion when Schwartz was on Watch What Happens Live. If they find out that that time frame that Schwartz even gave after he lied about the first time frame, he's lying again on Watch What Happens Live, then Schwartz is just toast. I mean, girls are still going to want to sleep with him, but he's toast. Like, you will never be able to believe anything that ever comes out of that man's mouth again, which I really think at this point we shouldn't anyways. So it could be a timeline thing, or it also could be who Sandoval, other than Raquel, has cheated with. Who else could it be? Now, some people say Billy Lee, right? Lala brought that up in this, which is interesting. I will say, because we know Billy Lee has stood by Sandoval and Ariana unfollowed her, like, you know, she said she would. Um, but I do wonder, I do wonder if that was an Easter egg. Why put that scene in there and why cut to a clip an unaired clip from the finale, from the reunion from many seasons ago, where Lala goes, Jesse Montana said, which, you know, Jesse has been a longtime Sir employee, also a musical artist. He came on this pod a long time ago. Great, good guy. I uh, like him a lot. And uh, they leave that in. So Jesse Montana said, You guys hooked up. And Sam was like, Dude, are you kidding me? You didn't say that, dude. Why leave that in there? Why Lee? Why put that in there? Because you could establish that he cheated. Well, wasn't it enough with Miami girl? I think there've probably been other things talking about Sandoval cheating over the years. Why leave that Billy Lee thing in there? So part of me thinks that Billy Lee, and I know that's dark, and I will say if that truly is it, I mean Sandoval. I don't give a fuck that it's like I have zero. Like that's another. That was another one of Ariana's really good friends. Billy Lee. And then it's just like, who wasn't Tom fucking in that friend group? I don't, I mean, I know Ariana's having a moment and she deserves it, but when all of this dies down, you know, I hope she has the best, I hope Bravo is fucking paying for the best therapist in the world. Because by the way, you can be on top of the world. You can have every amazing opportunity and all of your dreams can be coming true and you can still be so hurt, so alone, so lonely. And I know that's not, exactly her but i'm just saying that just because great things are happening doesn't mean that inside that you are doing amazing because this is just going to be a clusterfuck so my guess is potentially the cheating thing and if i were a betting man and uh i did one time lose 600 dollars on wheel of fortune slots in vegas so yeah i'm a betting man <laughs> bad boy of podcasting right here love to play slots Quarter slots. Sometimes I'll put three quarters in those. That's like 75 cents a hand. And I'm like, duh. And I'm like, bad boy. I'm a bad boy, dude. Um, so that's what it is. We'll find out. And we'll find out really quickly. We'll find out next week. Unless they tease us at the very end of the part one of the finale. And they'll be like, next week, Tom completely fucking fucks up again. Because he's a douche. Okay, so that was that article. My God, you guys. Oh, we've got so much to cover. What else do we got? I love that I like I'm asking a host, like, what else do we got? 
Let's see here. Uh, this was on Real Moms of Bravo Instagram account. Uh, Ariana Maddox tells Hoda Kotb and Jenna Bush Hager that Scandaval wasn't staged, says showrunners. The showrunners were just as devastated. And of course, Shep from Southern Charm had to pipe up. He's like, from what I know, the show of show, what I know of showrunners, <laughs> devastated, maybe for one second, then gleefully high fiving everyone. And <laughs> that's not a knock on anyone, by the way. Nature of the beast. I love when these people that have never been like, you know, they all of a sudden become reality stars and they're like, nature of the beast in show visit. You know what I'm saying? And then somebody said something to him and he goes, I'm just giving a little insight into the inner workings of shows. But if you're, um, if you're incurious, then that's, if you're incurious, is incurious an actual word? Is it like the opposite of curious? If you're incurious, then that's fine and not at all surprising. I like when Shep gets angry with people when it just, and also, you know, Shep and Southern Charm, Southern Charm has never had a fraction of the success of Vanderpump Rules. I am a loyal viewer of Southern Charm, but let's be real. I mean, honestly, it's just not even been in the ballpark. Like, not at all. Somewhere else, too. I mean, so, and these are good, solid shows that get solid ratings, but nowhere near, near the amount. Um, also, we had huge news, you guys. Pour one out. Um, Tom Sandoval and uh, Raquel Levis. Uh, this came out the day of the reunion is that they split up. They split up, you guys. And it was like, shitty Camelot has fallen. But... Also, this People Magazine article says, well, you know, the relationship status hasn't changed because they were never officially a couple. Uh, an exclusive to uh, People was given. Uh, this says, Tom and Raquel never put a label on their relationship to begin with, a source tells People. After their affair was exposed and the blowback they received, wouldn't it be great if the source was kin? Tom and Raquel never put a label on their relationship to begin with after the jacuzzi. Now, after their affair was exposed and the blowback they received, they said that before defining things, they needed to take time to address the issues in their own lives that drove them to this, this in the first place. And that's where things still are. Address issues, great, amazing. We see that Raquel is hopefully not lying and that, that is truly in a facility. But Tom went on the road. He's like, dude, my therapy, th my therapy is rocking the crowds, dude, with sweet cover tunes. The source notes, Raquel is, has been away in a mental health treatment facility and hasn't come home yet. Tom has been on the road focusing on his music. There's no split because they never were a couple. A rep for Levis had no comment, while a rep for Sandoval tells people, clearly the rumors going around are not credible as they don't have their facts right, including Tom's age. <laughs> I love that the rep talked about Sandoval's age. That's so funny. Sandoval, 40, and Levis, 28. I believe Sandoval's 41. Made headlines in March. Yeah, so this is so funny. I love the rep. Like, do you think now's the time to quibble about somebody's age? Do you think that's what the real, the real dirt? I was like, oh my God. He fucking had this nine month affair, but you know what really burned me? Him lying about his age. What a son of a, this son of a bitch. Oh, shakes fist angrily. Um, Ariana put up with a lot over the years, but she won't sit back and be disrespected this way. An insider says, oh gosh, this is all just gross. But it is interesting if you pay attention and we always should to win these PR things get released, right? Isn't it odd that they released that they weren't together or somebody dropped this article first reported, I believe in TMZ on the day of the finale yesterday. And who would that benefit? I mean, I guess they knew, you know, they, you know, the cast had seen the finale at that point. You know, I had talked to people that had already seen it. They got the finale. So Sandoval had definitely seen it. I don't know about Raquel, but Sandoval definitely saw it. And so this would potentially help a little bit of the blowback of like, well, at least they're not together anymore. Who knows? Uh, I did say, I mentioned in the first part, and I'm going to put this on my Instagram tomorrow, uh, a very nice uh, lady reached out to me uh, in Austin, Texas, and they had video of Tom. Uh, I guess he hooked up with a girl in Austin at one of his shows, but he was staying at her townhouse. And they happened, this group of people happened in this the clubhouse area where I guess you can use their TV and stuff. 
uh, they were watching the finale of Vanderpump Rules and Sandoval like walks by and he like, he's like, oh, and acts like he was on the phone and they have this quick video of him walking by, but he was actually with this girl that lives there. I just think, and that's, and he, I guess he was using the, the townhouse's gym, I guess the gym for the facility that day and talking on his phone with his manager. I'll have to find those and post it on my Instagram tomorrow. But I was like, dude. So what if him and Raquel, they're not necessarily broken up, but they never were together, but they're still there. But then Tom is still out there on the road, not like saving himself for his love, who's in a mental health facility, but he's out there doing the hippity dippity, getting his mojo back, as he would like to say. Mm, really just truly dark, dark stuff. So uh, sorry, shitty Camelot has potentially fallen. I hate that. Uh, okay. This is from Lala's IG live during the finale episode. She went live. She said that she, Shu, Sheena demanded not in a negative way, just emphasizing how triggered she was that her sister come with her to girls night. That's why, uh, you see Courtney, Sheena's, um, sister, she's there that night because also that was the day I believe she got the restraining order and she was upset. Lala said that the Uber eats good is gold commercial isn't the last musical the trio of the trio we will be seeing. Oh my God. If they do like a boss, like a boss, you got to get that, that like, like a boss is like a minute long song that I love from the, like a boss soundtrack. And they did an in uh, episode advertisement for it, but it was a full music video of Lala and Sheena singing. You can find it on my Instagram reels. I posted it like a couple months ago. I think before scandal all dropped, but it is truly a catchy song for being only one minute. Now, a special shout out goes to Terry Maloney. I love Terry Maloney. I'm hoping uh, very soon to be able to talk to her. She has been so kind. That is, of course, is Katie's mom. I hope she signs on for season 11. I'm crossing my fingers on that one. But on La La's podcast this week, Katie Maloney was on. And uh, I have not heard this yet because I want to play this for you guys. I get really, I get really, I get really nervous um, just hearing myself or hearing about myself or something. So let's hear this together. This is Terry Maloney on La La's podcast. Just, I have to shout out my my buddy, Danny Pellegrino. Thank you so much for this sweet text message and, and showing me love. And Ryan Bailey also for always just the support. Two and, great human yes, beings. Mm -hmm. Yes. Good. I yeah. love that. Well, you've got a lot of support. Well, he, wow. Lala said I... Uh, <laughs> an appreciation people. post, which I... Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> an people. appreciation post, which I... A Ryan full? Bailey did. It was so he cute. Did? Yeah, I was like, oh my gosh, that's my real estate photo. <laughs> <laughs> Terry Maloney, she's a real estate agent by day and just savage mother by night. I love it. Thanks. Okay, so me and Danny were two of Terry's favorites. I'm hoping to really knock Danny off and eventually be Terry's most favorite. But that was really nice. I'd, I had not heard that yet. I woke up to so many messages when Lala's podcast got released of like, oh my God, Terry shouted you out. And uh, that was really, really nice to hear. And I, I really meant everything I've said about Terry. Terry reminds me so much of my mother, even though I think she's younger than my mom, even though my mom is, you know, beautiful inside and out. Uh, but she's been so great to me this entire season. And uh, she's always said really amazing things. Um, and, and always checked in with me about my mom and I don't want to get emotional right now because it's about my mom. Oh my God. You, I'll, you know, I'll say this really quickly. This is why if you, if you listen to that first part, uh, halfway through, I got it or towards the end, I got a text from my dad. You know, my mom is dealing with, uh, you know, stage four cancer and it's, um, you know, there's no cure, unfortunately. And, uh, we've been, it's been such a wild year. But um, the doctors approved her going to Hawaii with my dad for three days or two and a half days. And she left on Wednesday, I think, with my dad. And we were really worried because, you know, it's like her body's been through a lot. It's really painful. You know, it's hard for her to walk long distances and stuff. And But it was it's the same in the Big Island. My dad was in Vietnam. If you listen to this podcast, they talked about this a while ago. Um is that before they were married, my dad, you know, Vietnam, you had R and R where they would send the kids for a little two week vacation. You know, they'd be fighting in Vietnam. And then all of a sudden be like, you want to go to Hawaii? And they would fly, you know, their wives or their girlfriends out there. And, you know, my dad had to write my grandma who's rest in peace, grandma Davis, 
a letter asking, begging for my mom to be able to send it. That like, that was just unheard of. My mom was a very good Catholic school girl. Um, and she met my dad in Hawaii and they're at the same place that they were 53 years ago. And my dad sent me a picture of that. Like, this is the same beach. And, uh, God. And, uh, and then Tom Sandoval came and weren't ruined the whole thing. He tried to steal away my mom from no, uh, I just got a text from my dad saying that like, um, they had such a beautiful first day and they were just, you know, you can tell my mom looked so happy and she loves looking at the ocean. You know, she, she loves the ocean and she, that's what she requested. She wanted to see the ocean and they had such a good first day. And then unfortunately I just gotten a text during that recap at the very end where my dad was like, you know, she just didn't have a good day today. She had done too much yesterday and she had to be in bed all day. And she's like, it's, he's like, it's still good. It's still good. Everything's good. But you know, you'd tell. And it just, I would think in those moments, like when you have like a joyful moment, you know, like seeing the ocean or something that in the back of your head, maybe, and I don't know this, I just, it made me sad thinking about was that I was thinking like, maybe you forget sometimes that you are um, terminally ill. And, uh, and so you forget about that for a day and then you come back and your body isn't cooperating and i just and i just hope that my mom isn't bummed out anyways thank you <laughs> such a, such a buzzy. um anyways thank you to uh terry maloney and i'm glad lala didn't be like that asshole are you kidding me also i was dming with katie today katie's always katie's also been very i think katie has been tentative tentatively uh I think, you know, of course, Katie has to have her guards up a lot with people because a lot of people have said really, you know, very hurtful things about Katie, even if you guys think they were warranted or even, you know, it's like this season, I think is such um, not a victory lap in any way, but I think it's, it's a, some sort of redemption, but at what cost? Because she lost something that she truly loved and probably still loves. But I, I would imagine with Katie, you're tentative with anybody new. And, uh, uh, but she's been always really nice and receptive and, uh, I hope I get to talk to her very soon. Uh, Peter Madrigal, congrats to Peter. He's doing Weight Watchers cocktails. He's even getting in on the, the, the scandal economy. So congrats to Peter, uh, Heather McDonald's, I guess, uh, I have a lot of listeners that love her. I love Heather. Heather has been so nice to me. Um, really, really so nice. I, I think I mentioned this like a couple of weeks ago, I was having a tough Friday, after releasing one of these massive ones and I got some really interesting, weird messages and Heather like talked me through everything. Like it was just so kind. She like took the time to call me, talk about things. And I, I just, I, there is like in this group of podcasters and in Bravo and reality shows, there's some really kind ass people there. Also Heather McDonald, a Terry Maloney fan. Um, and Heather McDonald revealed on her Patreon, I guess that Billy Lee has asked to be on juicy scoop more than once. Now, Heather McDonald had an amazing uh, a guest. He had a Mr. Jax Taylor, who we talked about. Uh, Amy Field took these notes for us. Um, and with Jax, it, I just believe 60% of what he says. So you don't know. But it was a fascinating interview. Of so much information. Because he says that when this happened... Uh, Andy texted him to be on watch what happens live. I love that potentially Andy and Jack's text next day. Um, after this, Jason, who is Janet, um, Janet Elizabeth's husband. Uh, I love Janet. Janet's always been supportive of me, but Jason's a good guy. In fact, Jason DM me after this as well. And was, and we were both commiserating about how we did not believe it, how we, we did not, we couldn't believe this. And I don't really talk, I've not really, I don't know, no Jason, and this is now months ago, but I, we were both just like shocked. But I guess Jason texted Jax at 8 a.m. and um, said that, uh, you know, that he couldn't believe that, they, or sorry, Andy texted Jax at 8 a.m. and saying that they'll get him on next week. And, but also Jason, Jason was just telling Jax about like, wow, I totally didn't think this guy would ever do something like that. Um, 
says he was moving back to Florida when the show initially came on. Said he did a reality TV pilot with Stassi in the Bahamas pre Vanderpump Rules. Where is that footage? My God. He says the Peacock watch along is the first time he's ever watched Vanderpump Rules and he's now re watching for his podcast with Brittany, but only the first two episodes. Ooh, well, those are good. Wait, Jax, get to the end of the season of the first season. And also, I want you and Brittany to watch that faith. But also, do we believe that he doesn't watch? I think I remember him doing live Instagrams where he would say, I don't watch, but it was like on in the background. Said they used to catch Raquel reading lines and practicing from scripts before scenes. Defended her, though, saying that she was just nervous. So he's saying that Raquel would like have like kind of crib sheets of like what she should say in a scene. Um, he... Jack said he wanted to be sure to say this politically correctly. He says Raquel has stuff going on upstairs more than the rest. He's, she's a lost person. Uh, I think everybody has that similar opinion. Uh, but P I've heard people say similar things about Jax. It says he had to force Brittany to be on the show. She wanted no part of it. Do we believe this? I mean, Brittany is a, seems like a very nice person, but do we believe this? She seems like she loves it. And that's not a bad thing, but she seems like she genuinely digs it. So is that, is that true? I love that. I'm asking you guys, can you guys is hey, would you tell me if that's true or not? I, I can't, I, I don't just doesn't seem like it's true. Uh, he thinks Sandoval was hooking up with Raquel at the time of Rachella. See, this is where we differ. I could be wrong. Here's of course my Rachella bracelet that I'm, I got to get a shadow box for this. Um, I just don't think it was that long ago. And if it was, if that is the secret reveal at the reunion, then double fuck you guys. And at that point, that's two years prior then. Then at that point, I'd be like, guys, at a certain point, it's time to let everybody know. Like if you're that long into a relationship, like, come on. Next thing you're going to tell me they have a secret family. Oh my God. Did Raquel disappear for nine months at any time? Um, he immediately wants to talk about James's proposal to Raquel so he can bring up Sandoval's money. He brings up Sandoval's money problems with the IRS right away. Okay. This, I will say, this was something I remember back in the day. Uh, I was at the Abbey around Sandoval for something. And I was in a converse. I, I was over, I was not, I mean, I wasn't throwing in on the conversation, but I remember Sandoval saying something about Jack's and like how their house was not on the up and up or it was something about like Jax's money issues. So who knows? These people just seem to like throw out these money issues with each other. I don't know. I would imagine Sandoval has money issues, but Jax says the IRS is involved, but Jax also just paid a huge tax lien against him from the state of California. I don't know if he brought that up in this. Um, goes off about Tom's MO of doing nice things for people so he can use it against them later. <laughs> I wonder if he's going to use it against me later for doing that, that sh thing I told you at the beginning. Heather injects to say what Lala and Sheena thought about the money thing. They told her he was always the first person to step up as a friend. Jax interrupts and says, it's insincere and a facade. He said that to me on DM the other night too. Oh, shit. Like Jax really, I mean, it would be interesting because the last time Jax was on that season when hit, remember in the uh, Sir parking lot, Sandoval went after Jax was like, come on, dude, dude. And Jax was like, whatever. There is no love lost between these people. And I would love to see where they're at now. He makes sure to say Raquel was not his first affair. He jumps to the Miami girl story, which he says was the first week. Um, that Tom and Ariana started dating, which would actually also go because in Watch What Happens Live last night, Ariana confirms that she did know about Miami Girl, but they were not exclusive at that time and she thought it would make him look bad. So she agreed to hold that secret. So I thought that was very honest. Shows you again that Ariana is an honest person and that she was there really to protect uh, Sandoval a lot of the way. Uh, he retells the Miami Girl story. Um Jax also says, I don't think you should buy a house until you're married. Um, now Ariana has to deal with all of Tom's tax issues, Jack says. This is the exact reason you don't buy a house with someone you're not married to. Um, Amy did make a note that Jax and Brittany did get their house before their marriage. Um, he said he feels bad for Ariana. You shouldn't play house. 
come on, dude. I love that Jax is still like setting these kind of 1950s style rules. Um, I don't know. Ariana is a new guy who seems really cool. I want to be friends with him, Jax says. <laughs> I want to be friends with him. Jax is a wild character. Jax really did make good reality television. Uh, he's infuriating as hell, though. Heather brings up how Ariana said over and over again that she didn't want to get married or have kids. Um, Jack says, if Tom didn't like that, he should have never been in this relationship. Um, but I will say this as well, because people keep bringing up this kid thing. Jax said this on one of the watch alongs. And I agree with him, actually, is that he made this point of like, Tom would be a horrible father. He doesn't want to stay home. This guy never has wanted to stay home. It's not like potentially. So I wonder how much Tom really truly wants to have kids and how much of it is him thinking that society deemed that you should be in a relationship and you should be with kids. I think Tom at his core wants to be a fucking swinger, you know, like that seems to me something that is more Tom speed. If you, if it, you know, um, says Tom would come home every night drunk as can be to Ariana, who is a homebody says it must've been miserable for Ariana. Um, this is the stuff you argue about as a child regarding Tom working on his love with Ariana. It is funny to hear Jack say some of this stuff because it is so hypocritical, but that has always been kind of Jax's MO as well is that he doesn't necessarily understand that him saying this stuff also says a lot about him and his own behavior that we've seen says Tom Schwartz did the wrong thing and should have told Ariana, but he was in a tough position, blah, blah, blah. Schwartz is dealing with enough. And this is where he gets really personal. He says the triplets are alcoholics. Um, I thought that was a weird part of that to share. And uh, I don't know much about that, but that's what he said on the show. Um, and I hope they're okay. But also like, you know, I guess Schwartz did reveal Jax's baby name. So now Schwartz, Jax is getting back at him. Uh, I guess Schwartz's dad is in and out of the hospital. The mom is sick. Um, yeah, I mean, this is all would have been interesting. Like, wouldn't you have wanted to know what else is going on in Schwartz's life instead of I miss my family? I miss my family. Like, I want to know details like that. I think the audience, not even that we can handle, I think it informs us. I think we need that in these reality shows to get us away from this kind of overview of darkness. Jack says Schwartz is not dating Joe and Schwartz doesn't want her around anymore. Describes her as Chris, as Kristen did as on crack. Um, Kristen 2.0. Oh, Kristen Doty. Damn. Mike throws Doty under the blump bus. Um, Jax did tell that story, I think, of like Joe showing up at Schwartz and Sandy's when she wasn't supposed to be there. But I will say guys seem to lie to the other guys in this group. So who knows if Schwartz is lying to Jax? June, I think these these guys all just fucking lie to each other. Says Joe moved in with Schwartz because Tom can't be alone. I love, I love Tom. I love Jax's. By the way, when Jax was DMing me, then he really was like, dude, are you kidding me? You looked up to him? That's ridiculous. Like Jax just. Jax just tells you really what he really thinks. Uh, says Schwartz has known about the affair a lot longer than he's saying. <laughs> By the way, Heather must have been in a hog heaven with this. Heather asks about the infamous drag night and Jax gets super irritated. I don't know why I allowed that. Oh, stop. It's just drag. What are you talking about, Jax? Heather asks about Sandoval's sexuality and Jax gets super triggered and says, I'm not getting into this. Yeah, because you'd have to potentially get into things that you've done. Says so Schwartz is easily manipulated and said he advised to cut ties with Sandoval. Says Kyle Chan knew. I did know this. Completely threw him under the bus. That's where Britney's wedding ring is from. Um, Jax didn't bring up the wedding ring. He bought Britney, though, in this. So that, you know. But Kyle Chan provided these people with a lot of discounts. But I will say from somebody very close to this situation that Kyle Chan did know and that this was very hurtful to Ariana because Ariana considered Kyle Chan a friend. So a lot of people that Ariana considered friends did know, and they kept it from her. It says Ra Raquel is staying in a hotel right now, not in a mental facility. Hot take from Jax. That's gotta be a big bill. Like a motel six. That's like, those are cheaper, like week long stays. But like, if that were really true, I think you would have somebody from a hotel 
tip off Demois. Come on. Heather theorizes that Sandoval told Schwartz that he promised he would break up with Ariana after the season. Jack says maybe because San- Sandoval is manipulative. Says he went to Schwartz and Sandy's on Thursday at 10.30 p.m. and there were five people in there. Says the owner hates Sandoval and wants to buy him out. That's Greg. Jack says his cheating was different because Sandy had an affair, not just one night stands. I love when we get in the minute, like the, the rules of cheating. Uh, Jack's like, my cheating was very noble and cool. And Sandoval's cheating, very bad. Says he cheated because he hated himself, insecure. Well, come on, man. Maybe Sandoval hates himself too. So are you telling me, Jax, right now that you love yourself? (laughs) He describes Brittany as a strong, strong woman. He says it's impossible to cheat nowadays. Okay. Throw off that scent, Jax. I wonder if Jax goes and whacks off at Schwartz's too, like Sandoval does. Poor Schwartz's apartment is just like, you know, I bet everybody is getting more action in that apartment than Schwartz. She was like, are you kidding me? I had to clean up again in the bathroom. Um, Says that when he was on VPR with Sandoval and Ariana, they refused to talk about their relationship and had arguments off camera with production about how unfair that was or Jax did. I agree with that. That sucks. Says Sandoval was only at his wedding because of Britney and he likes Ariana. Dude, he, he, you can't rewrite history. It's on film, dude. And he was on watch. What it, he said the nastiest things about Ariana, but I'm glad he's at a place where he likes her. He gets emotional when talking about going back to the show because he's so happy in his life right now. Jack says he has gone to colleges to talk about psychology in the show. I'm not sure. Ju- okay. Love it. Let's, by the way, Jax is on social media. I, I don't really look at Jax's social media. Can anybody point me to any video of him at a college talking about psychology in the show? Please, because I want to do a whole separate podcast just about that. Uh, Jax hates Charlie, says she doesn't fit. But remember, Jax has a reason to because at the reunion, Charlie was the one that called like called him like a bitter old man. Um, asks about Billy Lee. Heather first says that Sheena thinks yes, that Sandoval did hook up with him. And Jax agrees, but makes it seem like he only said it because Sheena said it. Jax is really worried when it comes to potential sexuality stuff in any kind of way. Yeah, like even though that wouldn't like, you know, Billy Lee's a woman, but it is one of those things where Jax is like, oh no, oh. Jax says Sandoval is sick for profiting off of this. I do want to point out <laughs> I do want to point out that today Jax or yesterday Jackson Brittany released a full line of Jackson Brittany merchandise. And it was like, you know, blocked by Jax. Um, you know, they had the Andy Warhol Jax print, which actually Jeremy Ariana's brother made. Um, so there's a whole line of Jackson Brittany um, memorabilia that they just released. So it is funny that he says it's sickening to make money off of this. It's like, you guys are all doing it. Like even, you know, DJ James Kennedy released his worm with a mustache viewing party t-shirt and hat, which I kind of want, but I'm cheap and I don't want to buy one for myself. But I kind of want that DJ James Kennedy one and I've got to break myself of that need and desire. But come on, we're, we're they're all using this thing and making money off it. Um, Let's see what else. On to the Randall scandal. Heather plays the preview for him, which Heather McDonald is in, one of the talking heads. How dare you, ABC? I should have been in the Randall scandal. In fact, I talked to Lala about this on DM the other night. Not about like saying why I wasn't in it, but I'll tell you. Anyways, uh, it's the first time he's seen the preview or knows about it, then jumps in to tell his side of the story. It's the same exact story as the clips from the podcast episode with Brittany. He rep- repeatedly calls himself a family man over and over again. Uh, He seems annoyed he's not getting to be in this documentary, (laughs) says he was hit up all the time by the L.A. Times, etc. for stories on Randall because Randall allegedly owes him seventy five thousand dollars still. And uh, yeah, he plays the victim. He trusted the wrong person, blah, blah, blah. Um, okay, so that was the Heather McDonald. Now, Andy Cohen was on the Lost Culture Ristas podcast with Bowen Yang. And uh, oh, God, it's, it's like three in the morning, you guys, and Matt Rogers. Sorry. Um, this is what Andy said. The Jonas brothers didn't know who Sheena was despite being in their movie camp rock. Sheena was in camp rock. You guys, Kevin said his wife knows who Sheena is though. Andy's first reaction to Scandaball was calling Alex Baskin, the executive producer and booking watch what happens live. Uh, love it. According to Andy, they were toying with the idea of having Jax on before Scandaball happened. Um, so Jax wasn't lying on Juicy Scoop, which is great. So Jax said, oh, that's what he was saying earlier, is that they were saying that Andy wanted him on regardless of Scandal. So that's very interesting to me. 
I still find that so hard to believe, but listen, I'll believe that, I guess. Andy says he's asked uh, if the cast was utilizing Bravo psychologist and immediately wanted to check in on everyone's mental health. I think that is very smart. I hope that is very true. Says he always had a soft spot for Sandoval because they're both from St. Louis. Um, Andy says he thinks that Sandoval is trying to um, cancel his, and this note actually didn't make it through. So I don't know cancel what. Um, okay. So who knows, but also Andy did, uh, Sandoval did, uh, reach out to Andy saying that they were in the same town and come to a show. And Andy was like, uh, yeah, I got, I got something else going that night. I just don't think this is the time for Andy to be at Tom's show, but, and also the balls on Tom to even put Andy in that position. Uh, here is Randall slamming the upcoming Hulu doc about him, which will be, I believe this week. Um, Randall Emmett says, Almost one year ago, the Los Angeles Times wrote a highly biased and factually inaccurate hit piece on me. One of the writers, Amy Kaufman, who I think is brilliant, seemed to have a personal vendetta against me. Dude, she's just a reporter. I believe due to her alleged friendship with my ex, Lala Kent. There wasn't a friend. Okay. Among other things, the article contained fictitious and greatly exaggerated stories made up by a few former disgruntled employees who had been dismissed. Lala was also a participant in this fiasco, likely because I have been fighting for 50-50 joint legal custody of our child. The movie producer goes on to explain why he didn't participate in Hulu's project based on the article. Um, it should be noted that Lala Kent was not interviewed for this documentary as well. She was actually interviewed for Nightline that aired on Tuesday night. He says, I declined to participate because it very quickly became apparent to me the film was going to be as biased, if not more so, than the article on which it was based. It's my understanding numerous people were contacted to participate in this documentary and mostly declined. Emmett claims that he was told people were encouraged to speak negatively about me, while the vast majority have only positive things to say. <laughs> it also appears to me um, that very little, if any, fact-checking took place with a complete absence of any journalistic integrity whatsoever. He also called it a regurgitation of the biased Los Angeles Times article and slams it as a cheap attempt to capitalize on the current Vanderpump Rules fever. Now, of course, it is capitalizing on Vanderpump Rules fever, but the LA Times article was done so well, it even had voicemails that Randall left for assistance on it. Um, you don't just put out an article like that without heavy, heavy um, you know, line by line documentation of how you got to that point. Uh, you know, a hit piece is only you say that usually because you've done something really worthy of a hit piece. Harvey Weinstein said there was a hit piece on him as well. So only time will tell. But I will say this in the last couple of years, I've had random girls DM me just about like, you know, that Randall approaching them for really weird pictures and really like all of this kind of really dark shit. And it seems like the, and th that was right when he was with Lala. And it seems like this guy, uh, there's a sickness there and producers are their own kind of, they live in their own world, but it's really gross. And this shit will catch up with you. But to me, if that's a hit piece, this was just a classic, uh, bullshit defense of something that you allegedly most likely did. Um, there was a Demois blind um, talking about contract negotiations have commenced for the next season of Vanderpump Rules with the self-appointed number one Tom already digging his heels in for an eye-watering amount in comparison with the figure he took home from last scandal-filled season. He thinks the show revolves around him now and his already mega-sized ego is now gargantuan. Now, Alex talked a little bit about contract negotiations in that article. I will say Tom is off contract, so he could ask for whatever he wants. They're going to argue as a production company the economics of reality shows are very different than other TV series. Now, both things are right. Like Tom should be asking for that amount of, or whatever amount he is asking, he deserves, I mean, not deserves, he should be asking it. That's what he should be doing if you're off contract. And especially because of how successful this season one was, but you can't guarantee that success next season unless Tom like completely cheats again. Um, so I, I don't know, but I don't doubt that he would be asking um, also we had some, uh, from the at not today neck account, we have some pictures of Tom in a, a white hat and a Beetlejuice shirt, uh, in Austin with some women. I think one of these blonde women is the, uh, condo he was staying at. Uh, here's also Garcelle Bouvet laughs about real housewives of Beverly Hills, uh, new season, but says son was used 
by the Vanderpump Rules producers was used. And I completely, I think this is a problem that Garcelle and all mothers have because they want to support their sons, but I don't think he was used. I think Garcelle's son was into some really bad shit. In fact, Garcelle's son was at the Vanderpump Dogs uh, event they had tonight in Vegas where Lisa was. Garcelle was there and Oliver, her son, was there. There's stop trying to make Oliver happen. This guy's not a great dude. I don't want him. And it's like Lisa, you know, he's like, this isn't Scandal Part Two. We don't like him. There's never been a redeeming moment yet with her son. So why throw him into these waters? And Garcelle, I just think, unfortunately, is blinded because it's her son. So that is bound to uh to happen. This was also uh, a blind, or maybe this was a CC Loves You account says. I was at Tom's concert yesterday and can confirm it was quite empty. He also hit on my sister and asked for her number. Do not think he is together with Raquel. Judging by his behavior, he did not seem sober. He was sloppy and very talkative, said he cheated out of stupidity and he was on autopilot. He was hanging out with Raquel a lot and she seemed receptive, so he went for it. He mumbled something about another girl, but quickly changed topics. He was eager to talk about the scandal. We barely asked any questions. He claimed he wasn't really letting potential consequences of his actions rise to consciousness. Consciousness. I don't know. You know, I don't know if that's even close to true, but I'm just reading it. Um, here's boots on the ground from the real moms of Bravo account. Um, this was the Jax thing that they bumped into Jax that night. So what he was saying on Heather's was true. Uh, Jax said Sandoval hasn't paid taxes in years and the IRS is after him. Jax kept saying how Schwartz is his best friend. And he's really worried that he'll get dragged down because of this. Yeah, man, the dragging has already happened. Joe was very drunk and in the bathroom asked if my friends watched the show. They obviously said yes. And she said, do you know, Joe, that's me. I'm Joe, Joe coming up to strangers. Can you spare a square? I'm Joe. It seemed like she was very into Schwartz, but I wasn't getting that vibe that Schwartz was into her. Maybe she was, maybe he was just in work mode. I don't think Tom Schwartz is ever in work mode. No offense. We also have a Dumas blind uh, with a picture of Schwartz at a table eating at pump with Ken and Lisa. It looks like he does have a plate of food in front of him and a drink in front of him as well, I believe, it looks like. Is he drinking a martini? It looked like a heavy conversation, this source says. Uh, the DJ James Kennedy merchandise, he's selling his shirts for $35. Um, here is the Ariana Maddox uh, interview in New York Times. Oh my goodness, you guys. Um, so here's the New York Times article. It uh, talked about... Uh, your professional su success seems to be coming at the cost of your personal life. How are you grappling with that? She says it's a lot of pressure becoming uh, because for any public facing woman or any woman in general who goes through something, there are a lot of expectations around how you're supposed to handle things. It is a lot of pressure when someone puts you on a pedestal. Eventually, you're going to fall off. I'm just trying to remain centered in myself and make sure that I'm just being me and living life. And sometimes that's going to mean making mistakes and not doing what everybody wants me to do. But it is really incredible to have that support. And I feel as though it did come out a cost, a very unexpected cost. How does it feel to pick up filming again after news of the affair broke? She says, a lot of times I feel as though with our friend group and with our show, I'm in a position where someone said something or there was an argument and I wasn't there to see it. So I struggle to know how I feel about that kind of situation. In this situation, I felt so strongly, I knew exactly how I felt. Uh, what was it like to film the show season finale with your ex? When he sat down on that couch during filming and tried to give the sad sack act, I knew he was going to try to sell a bit. I knew he was trying to be that person so that I would be the angry person. I could see what was happening in front of my face and it was really frustrating. Honestly, when he started yelling at me, I felt a little bit satisfied that he was finally going to be the real him. Whoa. Kristen Doty's Tom's ex-girlfriend also appeared in the finale with you. Your friendship has come a long way. Why was it important to film this scene? She says she was at my house after I found out about the affair. I think at that point, my blood was 80% rosé and nicotine because I was burning the wick at both ends. She was asked by producers if she would film and she said, this is up to you, Ariana. I love her dearly. Their relationship was much different than my relationship with him. But at that same time, I think there's a common denominator when it comes to certain problems. What's crazy is the relationship their relationship ended 10 years ago, and yet somehow he's managed to not grow in those areas at all. Isn't that a really just very enlightening statement, enlightened statement, statement right there is that this dude has shown no growth. People grow, but sometimes us boys, us men don't. What was it like to film the reunion? It was kind of a weird day because I feel like most of the time in any other reunion, we go through the whole season. But in this reunion, it was really just everybody against one or against two cast members. We've never been that united ever. 
Do you think there's room for redemption for Tom or Raquel? I think any chance that either of them separately had for that ended when they started giving trash interviews, victimizing themselves. Her TMZ interview, which is the, okay, okay, Raquel, uh, what is, uh, okay, okay, have you ever slept with Tom? And Tom's Howie Mandel interview. I think had they not done or said all of those horrible things, maybe one day. But I think the answer ultimately is no. In our friend group, the answer is no. So she is saying that it is hard for redemption for these two people. Uh, they're asked, are you open to filming with them? And she says, no, I have nothing to say to either of them. Our show is very real and follows a real group of friends and neither of them are in this group of friends. So good luck. Yeah. Has this experience changed how you feel about being on reality TV? She says, I've always had a little bit of that anxiousness about saying something that would upset someone or whatever. And I still have that to some degree, but I also feel as though the worst possible things that could happen to somebody happened to me on this show, the loss of my Charlotte, my dog of 18 years, the loss of my grandma, the whole thing happening very publicly. Part of me feels like what's the worst that can happen? The worst already did. So going forward, it feels a little bit like what can I not handle at this point? Wow, that uh, truly a great New York Times article. Now, the View episode and the Hoda, there's a lot of similar beats that happen in that. So we don't really have to cover that, even though, I mean, at some point I got to get back to my life. It's 3.01 in the morning and I have not eaten tonight. Um, God, okay, never before seen. I can save that for later. Um, watch what happens live. I wanted to go over more clips, but she looked beautiful. She was glowing. Andy was very excited to have her there. I will say this. I remember talking to her years ago, I think maybe really briefly. We were talking about something about watch what happens live. Cause I said her and Tom had gone and watch what happens live. And I said, Oh, you guys did so good. I really enjoyed the episode. And she goes, really? I just, I sometimes don't know if like Andy likes me as much as like the guys. And I just thought that was such an interesting comment. Cause last night, I think if anything, if Andy didn't have an appreciation before, he sure has an appreciation now. And Ariana Maddox, you will always be the top rated show on watch what happens live in this I mean, they've had like, a, what not Watch What Happens like 10 years running now or something crazy like that? The number one show. You will always be this number one show and Watch What Happens Live unless he gets Beyonce soon, you know? So totally. Uh, also, there is something about Sandoval and Raquel and those publicity tour they did with the Howie Mandel and those horrible TMZ articles that we loved. You know, I always say, just be quiet. If you be quiet, people tend to forget, whether it be Army Hammer, whether it even like, you know, be quiet. That's why Randall even comments and he shouldn't even have done that. Just be quiet. But also, I think like it's something like at a certain point, I'm like, do they have the person representing Kendall Jenner on this? Because Kendall Jenner just had a run of really bad things. Like, remember she did the Pepsi ad where she broke up like a Black Lives Matter thing and handed a cop of Pepsi and it solved like BLM. You know, it was something wild. And then I remember one time Chris Jenner was like, I'm so proud of Kendall. She's making a huge announcement today. And I thought the announcement was going to be, she was like announcing that she was gay potentially. And I was like, that is so cool. And it just turned out she was like for her act, like pimple medicine. She was just being like, what was that? What is that stupid pimple medicine? They all did like Bieber and all that. Like she was just announcing she was like on Accutane. And I was like, how is that brave? But it feels like whoever was representing Kendall at that time is now representing Tom and Raquel. Um, I think we did it folks. I know I'm missing tons of things, but dude, I put my whole pussy into this tonight. I really did. I, uh, I, I think that's it for tonight. That is way that's five and a half hours of content. This is insane. I don't make enough money for this. Um, but I truly, truly fucking love it. I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope I didn't ruin this whole season of work uh, over these episodes because I, I I don't know if this is just horrible or not. But anyways, I hope you liked it. If you're one of the few people that have gotten to the very end, you did it. Here's the, There's no pot of gold, but thank you for being here. Uh, I hope you're enjoying your weekend. Remember, I didn't get to say this in the first one, but I hope you have the best flipping weekend ever. If you're on my Patreon, I'll be doing a Q&A episode this weekend. So I'll, I'll talk to you guys over there. But really, just don't cheat this weekend. Don't cheat ever. And if you are cheating, get out of the relationship. Um, try to be honest. I know it's hard. And relationships are so hard. The, the love that we have for each other, sometimes uh, it can create the most pain that we've ever felt in our lives. Um, and I just hope that uh, everybody, all parties involved, including Sandoval and Raquel, 
can make their way far past this. Reality television, life's already hard, but when you throw reality television on it, it makes it, it seems like it makes it a lot harder. So uh, I truly am thinking of everyone involved. So thank you guys. What a fun, I'll never wear white nail polish ever again. Hope you guys have the best weekend ever. And I'll talk to you bright and early on Monday with Sophie Ross. Well, we'll, we're going to be that we'll get some laughs. Okay. Bye. And if you're watching on YouTube, thank you. And if you're not go subscribe to the YouTube. Bye guys.